Hi, I'm Danny Duchamp. Welcome to my shitty Honda Fit. Uh, in case you couldn't tell, by the way, I'm white. Perhaps you are also white. And you know what? That's okay. That should be a pretty innocuous phrase, shouldn't it? It's okay to be white. I mean, we're meant to be in a society that uh, doesn't care about race. You know, we, we don't think that it's something that you should judge someone by. So therefore, saying it's merely okay to be a member of a race, it should be... Sure, obviously. Yeah, everyone agrees with that. That's fine. Now, as we'll see very soon, that is not the reaction that you tend to get, but I'm getting ahead of myself. That meme seems to have stuck around for a lot longer than anyone would have expected, doesn't it? I mean, for something that's meant to be so innocuous, it certainly has latched itself on to the cultural psyche. In case you don't know, about a month or so ago, a bunch of posters on 4chan's poll board decided to start spreading around these posters, in real life, in meat space, uh, that say simply, it's okay to be white on a white piece of paper in black text. It's just a very simple, striking image of, it's okay to be white, just that statement. And the reaction to it has been somewhere between terrifying and hilarious. Now... It's managed to keep that momentum going for more than a month, and about last week, I think, uh, Notch, the creator of Minecraft, jumped on the bandwagon. Now, a, a bunch of different people have got said it's okay to be white publicly, and there has been a similar reaction, but this particular one I got onto a lot of Twitter arguments about, so I'm just going to focus on this one example, also because it's a little bit instructive, I think. It's a, it's a typical example of how this tends to play out. Now... Without further ado, I suppose we should take a look at the tweet and see the kinds of responses it got, shall we? I've got my trusty tablet here, so let's just go through them one by one. So, there are two main kinds of response. The first is this, saying that there's something inherently racist about saying it's okay to be white. Uh, this Mr. Spooky Ghost person here says that fascists... Haters of refugees follow your leader and has a picture of Hitler killing himself, saying, you should kill yourself, Notch, because saying it's okay to be white makes you a Nazi. All right, then. So that's a little bit of a shocking response from our apparently anti-racist society, but this is just one response. Maybe this is totally unique. No one else has said anything like this. Well, let's take a look. Uh, this is a verified account. So that's one that has received Twitter's seal of approval, uh, it, it, the verification system, remember, used to be for determining whether some public figure was actually that public figure or someone impersonating them, but now it's just a seal of approval. Twitter will take it away from you if they don't like your politics too much. This guy, however, Twitter approves of his politics, so he gets to keep his check mark. Now, he, on Twitter, said the creator of Minecraft is parroting a former KKK Grand Wizard. <laughs> well... What importance is that? If David Duke thinks that it's okay to be white, and Notch thinks it's okay to be white, that that doesn't draw any connection between them. Uh, perhaps they also both like playing rugby, or eating takoyaki. I, I don't know. But the point is, if someone you don't like says something, that doesn't make that thing suddenly false. And anyone who says the same thing isn't suddenly evil. Put simply, if Hitler said that 2 plus 2 equals 4, that wouldn't make it 5. The person who says a statement has no bearing on whether that statement is true. Next, we have a ooh, particularly well-liked tweet saying absolutely with a picture of a KKK member, obviously implying that if you say it's okay to be white, you must be a member of the KKK. Now, that sort of response was fairly common, saying that Notch is racist for saying it's okay to be white. As baffling as that is, I mean, if, if you're saying that it's not okay to be some race, you are a racist by any reasonable definition of the word, surely. Uh, not that I care about the definition, it's a kind of a butchered word at this point, but if we're going to use it like these people clearly want to, it should refer to people who say it's not okay to be a member of a certain race, yes? Anyway, some people came out uh, less ambiguously and started saying, no, it's not okay to be white. Let's go through a few of those, shall we? Oliver here saying, it's really not. Brett here saying, no it isn't. George Catronus saying, no it's not. Midget Spinner saying, it's not. Sam, no it isn't. Leo, no it's not, Lamau. Noah says, no it's not. And there are endless numbers of them like those. Now, of course, maybe you'd say that these people are just trolling, but if you were to say that, you'd be wrong. Sure, some of them might be, but I've gotten into some extensive arguments with a few of them, and... They're not. Just, they're, they're really not. I'll post a link to some of the discussions in the description. And finally, I wanted to take a look at this last type of response that there was, which was essentially that 
well, sure, it's okay to be white notch, but it's ridiculous. Nobody says that it isn't. <laughs> Which is clearly contradicted by the other sort of response we just saw. But let's take a look at a few of these anyway. I don't get it. Paul keeps this meme up, thinking it's anything but mundane. Literally no one cares. Who is saying it's not? Stating the obvious? Let me try. The sky is blue, except in England. Belgian chocolate is greater than Swiss chocolate. Russia is the biggest country in the world, and the list goes on. This person, Ness, said, this might help you, bud, and that link there is to the Wikipedia page on persecutory delusion. Thanks, Notch. Being white really stresses me out. And then that slash S is in sarcasm, implying that, no, of course it doesn't stress him out. Being white couldn't stress anyone out because no one dislikes white people. It is, but no one says otherwise, and saying it is very clearly some claim of oppression when white people are not oppressed in any way. Billionaire guy tries way too hard to frame himself as a victim of an illusory anti-white SJW menace. Very sad. So yeah, plenty of people saying it's not okay to be white, and plenty of people saying that no one says that it's not okay to be white. I mean, they should probably try arguing with each other, but for some reason they just want to argue with people like me. Now, there is a secondary part to those people who say that no one says that it's not okay to be white. Wow, is that a triple negative? But yeah, you get what I'm saying. Um, those people also seem to say that there is no anti-white SJW menace. It's illusory as fancy, the last one I showed you, put it. Um, this is false. This is demonstrably false. There is a very strong anti-white bias in media. I'm not just going to claim that. I'm going to go through a whole bunch of articles to demonstrate that. And if anyone would like to change my mind that the media has an anti-white bias, then please just show me equivalent articles about other races. Let's begin. Let's start with this New York Times article from last month. Can My Children Be Friends With White People? by Echo N. Yanka. In it, Yanka essentially argues that because she perceives some white people to be racist, therefore she can never trust any white person, and perhaps her children can never even be friends with them. Quote, I will teach them to be cautious, I will teach them suspicion, and I will teach them distrust much sooner than I thought I would. I will have to discuss with my boys whether they can truly be friends with white people. Yeah, if you reversed that, that would be considered horrific racism. If I said that I will never trust any black person because I perceive some black people to be criminals, then that would be considered racism. Hell, if I said that I will never trust any black people because I think some of them are racist, like Yanka, for example, then that would also be considered racism. And that's probably fair, too. But when the target is white people, that's considered perfectly okay. Perfectly okay to be in the New York fucking Times. Next, here's a Washington Post article talking about why these professors are warning against promoting the work of straight white men, which specifically argues that people should stop citing the academic work of white men, straight white men specifically. Again, if it was black men, this would be considered incredibly racist. I'm moving on. Oh, here's a good one from the Huffington Post. North Korea proves your white male privilege is not universal. This should be good. It's by La Sha, and it's talking about uh, Otto Wambia, who, if you don't recall, was that guy who was um, imprisoned in North Korea over some trumped-up charges, uh, underwent some terrible treatment while in prison, and when he was released, he died shortly after due to uh, his treatment in the North Korean prison. The article borders on gloating about the American victim of the North Korean dictatorship because, well, he is a white male, so he must have been acting with his white male entitled privilege, and therefore, really, he got what was coming to him. How about another one from the Huffington Post? This one is an open letter to gay white men. No, you're not allowed to have a racial preference. The article essentially argues that while non-white gay men are allowed to have racial preferences in their partners, in, in who they choose to date or have sex with, white gay men aren't. I mean, do I have to say anything more? It's an obvious advocacy of a double standard based on race. This would never be accepted, and in the article isn't accepted, if it is aimed at any group except white people. Moving on. Oh yes, Salon. Now this one was originally posted on Alternet, but it was also hosted by Salon. So, white men must be stopped. The very future of mankind depends on it. Subtitle. For 500 years they've exploited their fellow man and plundered the planet. It's time they rein themselves in. I don't know about you, but I haven't exploited or plundered anyone. 
I just sort of do my job and make videos on YouTube and drink beer. Damn, it ran out. But yeah, apparently, because other people of the same complexion of me once did things like these, as did people of literally every other complexion, I am somehow responsible for it. It's, it is so, <laughs> it is so clearly their very own definition of racism, except aimed at white people, so it's okay. So just because that one was originally hosted on Alternet and then hosted by Salon afterwards doesn't mean that Salon doesn't write their own anti-white material. Take a look at this. White guys are killing us. Toxic cowardly masculinity, our unbearable national illness. This one essentially argues that because some white people have committed mass shootings, that it is the group, white people, who are to blame. This one's also echoed in my next example, which is from vice.com, why are so many mass shootings committed by white men? On the surface, that one might sound like, well, it's just a statistical analysis. It's not racism, it's just noting that the majority of people who commit um, these mass shootings are white men. However, the statistics they cite themselves are as follows. Since 1982, there have been at least 70 mass shootings across the country. 44 of the killers were white males. So that means about 60% of the mass shootings in America are carried out by white people. White people are around 70% of the population in America. White people are underrepresented in mass shootings. So if this says anything about race at all, then it says that there's something good about white people. Non-whites are more likely to commit mass shootings than whites. But no, that's not the direction that Vice goes here. For some reason, Vice desperately wants to tie this to white people for some reason, as though they have an anti-white agenda that everyone thinks is mythological. Fucking hell. Moving on. Here's another one arguing the same thing, how America has silently accepted the rage of white men. This one is from CNN, so an even more mainstream source there. Next, let's take a look at Affinity Magazine. Do white men really deserve to vote? The same people who brought us Trump. Yeah, because you don't like who a racial demographic voted for, we should therefore bar them from voting. That is not racial prejudice at all. No racism here, no sir. Actually, Affinity Magazine is a pretty egregious example. Here's one that says, actually, straight white men are the root of our problems. I, I'm not even going to go through it, I just wanted to share that headline with you. Here's one from Time Magazine. Women's March co-president Bob Bland says white women need to take a seat after Charlottesville. Because of the march that went kind of wrong in Charlottesville, as uh, alt-writers ended up clashing with Antifa, um, by the way, as far as I can tell, Antifa started the violence as usual, as they always do, but either way, let's say that the alt-right started the violence there. Why should this mean that all white people, even the ones who agree with these idiots politically, somehow are to blame, and should take a seat or stop being part of the conversation, as the article argues? It's ridiculous, and by their own definition, if targeted at any other group, would be considered racist. Ah, here we go, from Harvard Magazine. Oh, oh yeah, academia is rife with this shit. I won't go through any other academic examples, but oh my god, if you start looking at peer-reviewed papers, this shit gets insane. But I wanted to go with mainstream media stuff, so I'm only going to include Harvard Magazine. Let's take a look. Abolish the white race. Abolish the white race. Um, yeah, moving on. This one's from MSNBC. A new PAC asks white men not to run. A new political action committee has a message for straight white men considering running for office. Just don't. Um, I'm running out of ire at this point. It's just getting depressing. So I'll just go through a couple more examples and then I'll stop. But I think you should be getting the point by now. So this was an interesting story, uh, reported by businessinsider.com.au. Apple's VP of diversity says 12 white, blue-eyed, blonde men in a room can be a diverse group. Let me quote her on her justification for that. There can be 12 blue-eyed, blonde men in a room, and they're going to be diverse too, because they're going to bring a different life experience and life perspective to the conversation. Diversity is the human experience, she said. I get a little bit frustrated when diversity or the term diversity is tagged to people of color or the women or LGBT. Yes! I agree with her entirely, and uh, Danny, why are you including this? This is saying exactly the right thing about diversity. You know, it's, it's, it's breaking down racial prejudice. Why are you against this? <laughs> well, first of all, because she was fucking fired for saying that. White men can be diverse? That's terrible. How could you dare say that? And secondly, this. 
The Grammys Diversity Triumph. No white guys in the album of the year. Yeah, because that's the double standard that the media has. All white people? Terribly non-diverse. Diversity isn't about, you know, the things you actually need to do the job, like competence and life experience. It's about race. However, if there are no white people, if every single person in some group is a black male, for example, super diverse! Look how diverse this is! It's, it's a fucking amazing. Moving on. This, oh yes, this one's from the fucking BBC. I guess I'll just play the video for you. It should speak for itself. White people want to see an improvement for people of color. They need to understand that racism is not learned, it's inherited, and either consciously or unconsciously passed down through privilege. The uncomfortable truth is that the white race is the most violent and oppressive force of nature on earth. And that anti-white bias is something that the BBC has to the fucking core. You can take a look at job postings which uh, say that only candidates from black, Asian, or non-white ethnic minority backgrounds are allowed to apply. Everyone but white people, huh? No whites need apply. If... I was about to say, hey, if you flipped it around and said no blacks need apply, but... Honestly, if I have to explain to you that you can do that flip, that you can say, hey, wouldn't it be bad if someone said no blacks need to apply? Well, I think it's the same with whites. If I have to explain that to you, you are beyond fucking help. And don't worry, it gets worse. The Times.co.uk, another pretty mainstream source, if I had a choice, I wouldn't be a whitey. This one just gets fucking depraved. Uh, white is just a wrong colour for skin. A kind of mutation, as though some key pigment was missing from birth. It looks inbred. Fucking hell, can you imagine that being reversed? You know, black is just the wrong colour for skin. It looks inbred. If I said anything like that seriously, hell, just saying that now, merely parodying what they're saying, probably made a lot of people uncomfortable. It is amazing that anyone thinks this is acceptable, let alone mainstream media sources. Now let's say that you buy all this shit. You're a white person and you just start hating yourself because of just how evil and disgusting the mainstream media keeps telling you you are. Well, that also is evil. Babe not net. Sorry, white people, but trying too hard to be racist is low-key kind of racist. No matter what the fuck you do, if you're white, you're evil. And if you apologize for being evil and you try hard to fix your evil white ways, you're even more evil. And after seeing all of this, one would assume that at the very least you'd have to admit there are some groups which have sort of an anti-white position to some extent. It's obviously the understatement of a century, but you must at least admit that much, surely. Not mainstream media. Let's go to yet another news source, uh, metro.co.uk. Dear white people, you're never racially discriminated against, so shut up. Okay, so I'm stopping there. That is the impression that Western mainstream media gives about its opinion of white people. If you're white, you are straight up fucking evil. Anything a white person has ever done wrong, you are tacitly to blame for. Non-white people will never be held to these standards. If you try really hard to apologize for this evilness that you inherently have based on something you can't change, then you're even more evil. And finally, no one's racially discriminating against you. No one has an anti-white bias. You're just being crazy. This is a delusion. It's fucking maddening. I, and I, I kind of think that I don't need to make this video. I, I, I'm putting it out because it's probably good to be able to, in an argument, just say, hey, I catalogued all this shit. But I think really everyone knows this. This is all mainstream stuff. I mean, some were from more minor news sources, but I had the BBC in there. I had CNN. I had the New York Times. You can't get more mainstream than that. And remember that challenge that I made at the start of the video. Go ahead, try it. Find me one article that is equivalent to these ones from a mainstream media news source but is about non-whites of any stripe, about black people, about Hispanics, whatever. Because if you can't, then that doesn't just mean that white people actually experience discrimination from mainstream culture too. That doesn't just mean that there is an anti-white bias as well in mainstream media. It means that the only race which mainstream media actively attacks 
is white people. If you are not white, you do not know what it's like to have the mainstream media actively attack you for your race. Prove me fucking wrong.